The Shooting Range. In this episode, the joke that saved a lot of lives. Silver wages and how to use them. Hotline, the developers answer questions that you've left in the comments. But first, let's start with, we continue discussing the gameplay of the new machines from the update 1.71. Meet the fearsome T114. This unique vehicle holds a menacing firepower in a compact sized hull that can completely disappear from sight with the help of the decorators. The T114 resembles the BMP1. They both have somewhat unpleasant ballistics and lack good armor. But the T114 has lesser battle rating and still pierces 380 millimeters of armor and has a very quick autoloader. This tank is able to fire three times in a row, dealing huge damage to the enemy vehicle. If you don't think that's enough, look at the reload rate, just about 10 seconds. Some tanks can barely fire two shots in this time. And here you've got three grenades in a row, and then three more in case someone's still alive after the first shot. The small size of the vehicle combined with the decorators allow you to perfectly hide it in the nearest bushes. The T114 has only two crew members and they don't need a lot of space. So the tank comes out really narrow which enables it to be completely disguised. This vehicle can be used pretty much anywhere. It can go where an MBT can't and it can hide where a tank destroyer can't. Ruins. Narrow streets, rocks. The elevation angles allow you to play from any position. Well, almost. Surprisingly, the recoilless gun elevates only 8 degrees. So if your enemy holds the higher ground, <laughs> you're done. That means you probably won't want to play the T114 on maps like the Fulda Gap. Here is more advice that will help you get used to this vehicle. Try to avoid open spaces. If you survive an enemy blast, this is definitely your lucky day. Close the game and rush to a casino or something. Otherwise, play stealthy and don't pick standard routes for your movements. If you encounter a group of enemies, don't focus on a single target. Instead, try breaking their breaches or barrels. You can finish them after you reload. Remember the ballistics. Sometimes the wise choice is to fire blind shots from behind a cover and then use the binoculars for correction. The grenades don't tend to ricochet so it won't be a problem to hit the vulnerable places of the enemy tanks. And one more time, don't forget about the decorators. They will save your life more times than you can imagine. And now, let's remember this German guy with a very good sense of humor. Heinz Knocke was a true Prussian a brilliant pilot and a model officer. No wonder he loved joking more than anything else. He loved those subtle and fine jokes that weren't for everybody to understand. The ones too dirty but still irresistible to laugh at. And boy was he good at that. But one of his jokes was too big even for him. By the year 1943 the whole of Germany was under Allied bomber attacks and the Luftwaffe forces were doing all they could to keep the enemy's flying fortresses and Lancasters out of Reich's cities and industrial centers. But there wasn't much that they could do. There were hundreds of heavy bombers with deadly heavy machine guns all over them, flying so high and in a very close formation. Even the fastest fighters couldn't possibly approach them, no matter the angle of attack, the strategy and the quantity of the defending forces, the result was always the same. A deadly blast of the Browning machine guns destroying the German planes. 
and then Heinz Konoki and his fellow soldier Dieter Gerhardt thought it would be funny to drop a simple aerial bomb on a close formation of the enemy bombers. What can be so difficult about that? One just needs to calculate the trajectories of the Messerschmitt 109, the bombers and the bomb itself and correctly set a timer. Easy, right? On the 22nd of March 1943, five days after his friend Gerhardt was killed in action, Konoki brilliantly executed the plan. He flew to a needed spot above and in front of the B-17 formation and dropped the bomb. The result was astonishingly scary. The bomb exploded right in the middle of the formation. One of the B-17s lost its wing. The other two received so much damage that they had to crash land, and some others made it back to England, only to be decommissioned because of the damage. And Heinz Knoke became a national hero. He made a huge sensation. The American radio communications were full of panicking shouts about a brand new super-secret Nazi weapon. The first one to congratulate Konoki was Colonel Henschel. And while he was complimenting the new German hero, Knoki imagined him, all emotional, dropping his monocle into his cocoa cup, which he found extremely funny for some reason. Then a phone call awoke him in the middle of the night. Reich Marshal Göring himself called to congratulate him. One would say it was the perfect time to rise up the career ladder. But it was much more important to Konoki that he was the first ever Luftwaffe lieutenant to report to his commander in chief lying on his bed with no pants on. The only person who immediately understood all the terror of this joke was General Yusuf Kamhuber. He was a brilliant strategist of the aerial war and he knew exactly what would happen next. Goering, who didn't know a thing about modern strategy, would demand to bomb the American bombers. The Americans would switch to nighttime attacks, disperse the formations and get more fighters to cover the bombers. And the German fighters, equipped with now useless but heavy bombs, would become a perfect prey. The joke was literally a one-timer. But of course, nobody listened to Kam Huber. It happened just like he thought. The Luftwaffe demanded a full report on the mission from Knoke. They started developing special anti-aircraft bombs that were absolutely useless. The Japanese found out and started doing the same research, as they were also suffering from the Allied bombers. German and Japanese fighters burned oceans of precious oil trying to hit the enemies, even though it would be a lot more effective to use guns. In the end, the Luftwaffe pilots managed to destroy a couple more flying fortresses and the Japanese didn't register a single hit at all. As for Heinz Knoke, he survived through the war, probably because he laughed a lot. By destroying a few B-17s, he saved dozens and hundreds of others. But somehow, nobody thought to reward him for it. He didn't receive a distinguished flying cross from the Americans or the British, nor was he given the Order of the Red Banner from the USSR. And he certainly deserved those, at least for his sense of humor. And now, let's see how one can earn more silver lions without really trying. Here's a pretty common situation. You've spent a lot of time to get a new tank, played dozens of battles, finally bought it, but you don't have enough silver to put it into the slot and train the experts. Well, here come the wagers to help you farm a little more silver lions. A lot of players usually play only the golden wagers. Surely, it feels nice to get some gold just by playing the game. But the silver wagers tend to pile up in the inventory even though they can bring you a lot of lions. While doing the wagers, you need to remember only two simple rules. First, you can play any tech you like, but you have to have at least one rank 3 or 4 machine in the slot. 
And second, always make the highest bet possible. That way, you'll benefit even if you compete only one stage of the wager. And anyway, 10,000 lions isn't that big of a deal. There are several types of wagers. The first one is the battle victory wager. This one is simple. 10 stages for victories and you get more and more with each stage completed. Use whatever tech you like, as long as you're effective on that. As for the mode, we preferred the Air RBs and Tank Arcade. Also, you get three chances to lose, so it shouldn't be very hard to complete this one. Then there are two destruction wages for five and ten enemies. The first one has only three stages and it's really not that hard to destroy five vehicles in any mode. Also, in RB and SB there's a modifier for this one. One frag equals two. Now, the destroy ten units wager is a bit harder. We don't recommend to do it in air RBs. Test your luck in the arcades and the tank RB. It's not that easy to kill 10 enemies, but you get as much as 10 mistakes before it's over and the reward gets up to 500,000 lions. The Alpha Omega wager is a lot trickier. You have to get the first and the last kill of the same battle. 10 stages, 10 mistakes possible. The most reasonable thing would be to do it in the air AB or RB. There, you can dive from the start of the battle and destroy some artillery. Then comes the tricky part. <laughs> Stay alive till the very end. And when the battle is almost over, destroy some more ground targets. Easy, right? Another hard wager is the Hero of the Sky. If you're a good pilot and you're sure you can kill more enemies than anybody else, this one's for you. The reward is very good but you only get six chances to lose. So think twice as to whether you can actually pull it off. There are also the same wages for the tankers and for future sailors. They are called the Thunderer. For those of you who specifically like to shoot down the planes in combined battles, there's a wager called the Wingbreaker. Grounding five or more planes is enough to get to the next stage of this wager. If anything, you have six chances to lose. The last two wagers are for the team players. The first is called the wingman. If you're constantly in a situation where you hit the enemy but someone steals your frag, this is your chance to benefit from that. And finally, the best squad wager. Get your friends, be the best in the battle, get squad achievements, and if you're that good, you'll get this wager done in no time. That's it with the silver wagers. They'll help you get some lions not only for your actions in the battle, but also for completing these side missions. So don't stockpile them in your inventory. Activate them, master them, and get some extra lions in the process. Get ready for the traditional last part of our show, Hotline. Developers answering questions from the comments. The first question comes from Orlando007. Can you make a special video where you will answer to our question? We do it like uh, every episode. But anyway, try checking episode 50, the anniversary one. It was all about comments and questions. A player called Mirage asks, Now that we're moving further away from WW2 era vehicles, are we going to see more Cold War matchmaking in RB? Most games I play are still USA, UK and USSR versus Germany and Japan, despite fighting in Cold War vehicles. Well, in the event battles, you totally get the historical approach in matchmaking. As for the random battles, for now it stays as it is, but wait for the news. Then there is a question from Adi Pramono. How many calculations go through War Thunder in one second? 
like their shooting, armor breakdown, crippled wings, etc. That's a good one. We asked our developers, but for now, the most mathematical answer we got was somewhere between a crap load and oh, so many. We'll try to get a more specific answer later, so stay tuned. And the last serious question comes from Simon Twadowski. Any Easter eggs in the show? Of course. Try re-watching our special episodes or, say, episode 14. That's it for today, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on The Shooting Range.